Now at 5 a.m. Wednesday, WKYT This Morning, South Broadway in Lexington is closed from Red Mile to Angliana Avenue. We'll have the reason why, what you can do to avoid it just ahead. A man who evaded authorities for six years on the Appalachian Trail will be sentenced today. More on the man who embezzled millions coming up. And a local restaurant has been shut down after someone says they found a mouse in their food. Find out which restaurant and the details of that ahead on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Welcome into you. I'm Rebecca Smith. I'm Bill Bryant. Glad you're with us here on Wednesday morning, June 22nd, a summer day with some summer storms. Again, it's kind of been the pattern, you know? You know, it's very similar to what we see in the summertime, Micah. Yeah, and, and we'll especially see it later on this afternoon. Now, you will have a storm chance during the morning hours before noontime as they dive in from the northwest, but the best opportunity for severe weather is going to be later on today. We already see a shower out there early this morning as this front is right over us, and this shower is moving just to the north of Buckhorn. You're getting some sprinkles there in northern portions of Perry County, but it's southern Breathitt County. Jackson, you will not get that. Uh, you may get a couple of sprinkles, but for the most part, the heavier rain stays just south of you. Dice, you'll be next in line in northern Perry. If it sticks together later on this afternoon, we're at 87. It's not about the temperatures, it's about the thunderstorms. And this may be a better opportunity for the northern zones as opposed to the south, but virtually everybody has at least the chance at some severe weather. I'm going to break that forecast down for you coming up in about 10 minutes. All right, we'll see you then. Let's get to the news. Well, all of South Broadway and Lexington is closed from Red Mile to Angley Avenue right now. And it's because of a gas line leak on South Broadway. WKYT's Mark Barber is there live for us this morning with more on the gas leak. Good morning, Bill. This road closure is going to cause a major traffic impact during this morning's rush hour. Now, even if you do not take this stretch of South Broadway into work, you will still likely see backups on other busy streets like South Limestone and Versailles Road as a lot of the vehicles that would normally take this stretch of road here spill in over to those other streets. And then again, we expect to see some heavier delays there this morning. Now, the inbound lanes of South Broadway were scheduled to be closed from 9 to 3 this week, so crews could replace sewer lines here. The construction workers decided to work overnight instead because we have been seeing heavy rain during the daylight hours. Those crews hit a gas line around 3 this morning, and that is why all lanes of South Broadway are closed from Dakota Court to Virginia Avenue. At this time, there's no word on just how long the busy road will be closed. And as tens of thousands of drivers start to hit the roads this morning for the morning rush hour, we'll help you navigate your way around this road closure again here on South Broadway. Coming up at 5.30 here on WKYT News, we'll show you the quickest detours to make your way around this road closure. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you. Investigators are asking for help in finding a hit and run driver who they say hit a 10 year old boy in Pulaski County. The Pulaski Sheriff's Office says the boy was playing with his brother near Rick. Rock Lick Creek Monday night when their grandfather was working nearby. Investigators say no one saw the boy get hit by the car. Probably playing it, playing in the creek and uh, somehow came up on the roadway and was struck on the roadway. Investigators say they are looking for a red four-door car driven by a woman that was seen in the area around the time of the crash. The boy has been identified, but his family has asked us not to use his name. Neighbors say the boy was often with his grandfather, helping him farm. A deadly crash at a Frankfurt road shut down for nearly eight hours. The crash happened just after 10 o'clock yesterday morning at the intersection of Versailles Road and Lyons Drive. Frankfurt police say a car pulling out of a shopping center hit a tractor trailer. Investigators say 90-year-old William Howard died, and a woman in the car with him was injured. Versailles Road was closed in that area until around 6 o'clock last night, so investigators could reconstruct the crash. Now to WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain with an alert out of Madison County this morning. Michelle? Bill, there was a large police presence overnight in downtown Richmond. Now we're making phone calls to find out exactly why. Take a look at this video we shot overnight. This is what the scene near 2nd and Irvin Streets looked like. Our crew was kept away from the scene, but we understand it may have involved a standoff that started around midnight. Now we called Richmond Police for details. They told us that unfortunately it's not their policy to give out information overnight. So whatever was going on has since been resolved, and we'll keep digging and bring you updates on WKYT.com.
All right, thanks, Michelle. The war of words is heating up in the presidential race. In a scathing speech yesterday, Hillary Clinton blasted Donald Trump's economic policies. This morning, Trump is firing back. Hannah Daniels has the latest from the campaign trail. Now it's Donald Trump's turn. Today, he'll give a speech attacking his opponent, Hillary Clinton. Basically, she's crooked Hillary. I mean, uh, when you get right down to it, she will do horribly on the economy. Yesterday, Trump spoke with CBS This Morning's Nora O'Donnell. He talked about a significant fundraising deficit, hinting he may fund the race himself. As of May, Clinton's campaign had $42 million in the bank to his $1.3 million. The presumptive GOP nominee called it blood money. Every time she raises money, she's making deals. They're saying, could I be the ambassador to this? Can I do that? Make sure my business is taken care of. I mean, give me a break. All of the money she's raising, that's blood money. Yesterday, it was Hillary Clinton who blasted Trump, ridiculing his economic plan. He's written a lot of books about business. They all seem to end at Chapter 11. During a campaign stop in Ohio, the former Secretary of State called the billionaire businessman reckless and careless. Maybe we shouldn't expect better from someone whose most famous words are, you're fired. A report from Moody's Analytics this week seems to back Clinton's claims, estimating Trump's economic proposals would result in 3.5 million fewer jobs. Clinton will continue hitting Trump on the economy during an event today in Raleigh. Hannah Daniels, CBS News. All right, so in the latest uh, poll released yesterday, Clinton is leading Trump in the swing state of Florida. But in both Ohio and Pennsylvania, Clinton and Trump are running neck and neck. All right, and that poll from Quinny Piak. Our time this morning coming up on 507. Today, Governor Bevan here in Kentucky has scheduled an announcement about the state's Medicaid program. His office says the governor will announce the proposed waiver application that will transform the program. The news conference will be held at 9:30 this morning in the state capitol rotunda. Kentucky Attorney General Andy Bashir has also scheduled a news conference that's set for this afternoon. He is expected to talk about Governor Bevan's recent actions to dissolve the university. University of Louisville Board of Trustees and to change the Kentucky Retirement Systems Board. Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis has asked a federal court to throw out her appeals in the case. It stems from her refusing to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples for religious reasons. Davis's attorneys say the appeals are no longer necessary because a new law in Kentucky does not require a county clerk's name to be on marriage licenses. We're very thankful that the legislature has passed and the governor has signed legislation that protects not only Kim Davis, but accommodates the religious convictions and conscience of all the clerks in Kentucky. Davis spent five days in jail last year after she defied a judge's order and still refused to issue marriage licenses. Well, former House Speaker Dennis Hastert will go to federal prison today. The 74-year-old was found guilty of breaking financial rules by seeking to pay $3.5 million in hush money. He was seeking to cover up his sexual abuse of at least four boys at an Illinois high school decades ago. Hastert has a 15-month prison sentence. His lawyers argue that he should have received probation because of his health, but the prison he is uh, sentenced to is equipped to deal with medical problems. A Lexington Women's Clinic is asking the state Supreme Court to overturn a lower court's motion that stopped abortions from being performed there. According to our news partners at the Herald Leader, EMW Women's Clinic says in its request to the Supreme Court, the recent ruling has basically caused it to shut down. Last winter, Governor Bevin's administration filed a lawsuit against the clinic, asking a judge to force it to close because it didn't have an abortion license. A state judge denied the governor's request in March, but last week, the state court of appeals reversed that decision. So the Fayette County Health Department has shut down a Lexington restaurant near UK's campus. A sign on the front door of Red Bang Bang Chinese Restaurant on Mus Maxwell says the health department closed it yesterday. We were not able to reach anyone with the health department to find exactly out why, but in recent days, a Facebook post has been shared saying someone claimed to have found a dead mouse in, that was bought in the restaurant. In a, pace on its uh, a post on its Facebook page, Red Bang Bang managers claimed that the customer bought food, left, and returned 10 minutes later claiming to have found a mouse. Restaurant owners say the customer later asked for $25,000 from them. They also say they reached out to the health department for an immediate inspection. All right, we'll see how that is all uh, sorted yes. out. Uh, coming up on 510 on WKYT this morning, we are just getting started with all the latest news. A former politician was arrested after throwing something over a fence of a convent. 
Hmm. We'll have more on that story coming up after the break. Also ahead this morning, what Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen said to Congress. And can you bank on a career in finance? That's ahead in today's Money Watch. And we're going to be seeing thunderstorms later on this afternoon. That severe weather threat will continue today and for tomorrow as well. We're going to be taking you into the latest forecast coming up next. A couple of showers out there early this morning. When you have showers during the morning hours, the one way to do that is to actually have a front close by. And we have a front right over us. And that's where you're starting to see some of those showers take place. Now, that front's going to cause some issues later on this afternoon, off into the evening hours. You'll still get some rain chances this morning, too. So we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Stanton, you just missed on a shower. Uh, a pr brief heavy downpour about to head through Campton, rolling over Highway 11 at this moment. Campton, you're going to be next in line here in about 5 to about 15 minutes. Another one down towards south, just south of Jackson and southern Breathitt County. Dice community in northern Perry, you will be next in line across 15 as you work your way from uh, Hazard all the way to Breathitt County. So right there in the northern portions of Perry County. By noontime, I would say anywhere from 8 a.m. to noon, here come some showers, even some thunderstorms rolling through the region. You can't rule out severe weather during that time. But it looks like mainly afternoon and off into the evening hours. Evening hours, it should fade away, but afternoon, we're still looking at another batch rolling on through. So it's going to be on and off as we go through the day. Some areas will get tremendous amounts of rain. Some areas won't pick up all of that much rain. Yesterday, I was at 0.2 inches of rain here in Lexington in my, at my house. But you go five miles away, and they were at 1.2 inches. So that just shows you. It kind of depends on where you are as these storms pass on by because it's not a line of storms moving on through. It's going to be bits and pieces with very heavy rain out of these. The severe threat highlighted in the shade of red. The, the uh, farther north you go into the Ohio River Valley, you go off into Ohio and back toward Indianapolis and Indiana, make your way toward Illinois, that's where the worst of it is located. However, we still are not ruling out the possibility of some damaging wind threats rolling through our neck of the woods throughout the day. So we just got to keep that in mind, like I said, especially afternoon, but the morning hours still look like we we'll at least have the opportunity for some thunderstorms rolling on through, which will give us the brief chance, an isolated chance at some severe storms. So you get up toward the north rainfall forecast. Most of us right there about half an inch to about an inch of rain through Thursday. But look where this is setting up. That is that front right through there, and that will give you the chance, one, to potentially Three inches of rain. Let's talk about your seven day forecast today and tomorrow. Those are days you got to watch very closely. Strong to severe storms in the forecast. And then we hit Friday and Saturday. The, the rain moves on out, guys, but that heat really picks up 91 degrees there on Saturday. So it looks good there Friday to the weekend. <laughs> But it's going to be really hot, that's for sure. All right, we will get yeah, all right. ready. Good old summertime. That's right. Yeah, thank you, Micah. 516 on WKYT. Well, it may not be quite what you'd imagine a politician getting arrested for. Right, a former Argentinian politician was caught throwing bags of money over the fence at a convent. <laughs> they say the former Public Works Secretary, Jose Lopez, was caught with more than $9 million. Police have released this video of them searching one of the three vaults at the convent. The vaults were discovered near an altar underneath a rug during a police raid. Wow. Police say so far there is no evidence the vaults were used to put money away. The church at the convent says the vaults were intended to bury archbishops. So huh. that's just uh, different all the way around. Kind of sounds it? like a movie, yeah. and, you know. <laughs> I guess it could be one. All right, good to have you along Wednesday morning on WKYT. We have got a look at your money. Speaking of money, up next. What Fed Chairman Janet Yellen said to Congress, and you can bank on a career in finance. I'm Edward Lawrence in New York. That and more coming up in your CBS Money Watch report. Welcome back in to WKYT this morning, 520 on your Wednesday. What Fed Chair Janet Yellen said to Congress, and a premium on wedding purchases. And good news for MBA students. Edward Lawrence has the latest on your money. Fed Chairman Janet Yellen testified before the Senate Banking Committee Tuesday, saying the weak economic growth will hold off imminent interest rate hikes. Yellen says she does not see any threats to the stability of the economy at the moment. With the Brexit vote looming on Thursday, the Dow closed up 24 points, the Nasdaq rose 6. 
If you plan on a career in finance, then you can feel pretty good about your job prospects. The MBA employment survey found 80% of MBA students and graduates have already received offers. 92% of those offers are starting at a salary of more than $76,000 a year. Finally, the analytics firm Edited found there actually is an I do premium on dresses and other wedding expenses. After studying thousands of e-commerce sites, Edited found a 3.9% bump in the price of a wedding dress over other high-end dresses. And that's your Money Watch report. For more, log on to cbsmoneywatch.com. In New York, I'm Edward Lawrence. All right, you may start seeing more drones flying around the sky. The FAA just released some new rules for commercial drone use. It's expecting the industry to fully emerge in August, but there are limits. Drone operators can't fly at night, and they cannot fly over anyone not involved in their business operations. The drones also can't travel faster than 100 miles an hour. Some companies are planning to use drones for dangerous jobs, like inspecting towers and antennas. Those companies are hoping to reduce the number of yearly worker accidents and deaths. All right, so now at least some rules up there for the we sky. We need rules for those drones, <laughs> don't, we? Yeah, don't we? though. Good to have you along at WKYT this morning. There's so much more coming up on your Wednesday. Including a look at sports up next. We are another day closer to the NBA draft. John Calipari will weigh in once again. And last night, the South Atlantic League All-Star Game played at Whitaker Bank Ballpark. I've got the highlights for you next. A couple of showers over toward eastern Kentucky at this moment, rolling through southern portions of Breathitt County and also uh, right through that, that portion there in Wolf County along that mountain parkway. Just a brief heavy downpour. The main action is still back toward the north and back toward the northwest. Strong storms again for today. The only difference from today is the temperature will be a little bit different. One degree, and that's it. We're looking at strong, potentially severe weather. Look, during the morning hours through about noontime, you can expect some storms to move on in. Some of those could be strong and maybe even isolated severe cell, too. But it's really afternoon, and then we start to see that evening hour start to kind of taper off. So there's a lot to talk about in my full forecast coming up. But nonetheless, we are looking at strong, potentially severe weather once again for today and tomorrow, too. I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to really focus in on these two days coming up in your seven day. First, let's check out sports, see what's going on. John Calipari talked at length about his players in the NBA draft on a teleconference yesterday. And of course, Calipari optimistic about Jamal Murray, Scala Vissier, Tyler Eulis, and Alex Poitras. Cal said the NBA knows his guys are team players. You know, one of the GMs said to me, you know, the great thing is your kids, they come with that attitude that they want to win and they're willing to be a great teammate to win. And that's what I'm hoping that, you know, is that last gift they get from us before they walk in that league, that they have an idea about winning and playing to win. And um, so I'm proud of the guys that uh, are going to go this year, and I'm proud of the guys that have uh, performed in the league to this point. The best players in the South Atlantic League in town for the last couple of days. Last night, the Sally League All-Star Game at Whitaker Bank Ballpark. Keith Madison, one of the many ceremonial first pitches. Former UK coach right down Broadway. Legends have two All-Stars, Emilio Agando and catcher Chase Vallo. Vallo not available to play after he was hit in the face with a fastball last week. The Legends part of the South Division and the North Siders, they scored in the first. Max Schrock of the Hagerstown Suns doubles home his Hagerstown teammate, Victor Robles, who led off the game, and it's 1-0 North. Ogando would handle the fourth inning without a problem. Gets Alex Murphy, three up, three down for the Legends representative. Still 1-0 in the fifth. It's that guy, Schrock, again. Another rip to right center field. Yazan Rosari would come around to score. It's 2-0 North Stars. South would score the eighth. Huge crowd at Whitaker Bank Ballpark. And Austin Wright would give the fans sitting in the bleachers and left a souvenir, a solo home run. But it was a night dominated by pitching. The North All-Stars win it. Final score 2-1. to one. And that's a look at sports. Have a great day.